فتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون Let me tell you younger folks something especially those of you that are looking to get married the approaches you've taken to find a spouse, I will not spell out for you. You already know, and I already know. The options you've considered, the conversations you've, you've had, the social interactions you've had are between you and Allah. I'm no one to judge. But I know some of you have a guilty conscience inside of you. My first plea, I'm, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you, the most important asset you have, the most valuable thing you will have in this life is a clean heart, is a clean heart. Because that is the only key to Jannah. That is the only key to salvation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And when you give your heart prematurely to a relationship that is illegitimate, then that heart starts getting dirty. And when a heart starts getting dirty, it is no longer suitable for Allah Azza wa Jal anymore. So don't think that your relationships or your inappropriate interactions and Ill, you know, inappropriate you know, relationships are not going to have a spiritual impact. They absolutely and certainly will. And they will destroy in you the most valuable thing that you carry within you, your Iman. They will ruin it. You have to protect that faith. When you're looking for a spouse, it's okay to look for somebody that you're attracted to, that you find good looking, that you find their personality is nice and all of these other things. But don't forget the principles. The, you know, a, a few principles, if you can observe them, I think we can clean this process up. I didn't even talk about online matrimonials. You know why? Because the online, if, if you can observe these principles, it doesn't matter if you're looking for a spouse online or on site or on campus or on convention or on whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the matter of observing particular principles. Try to, try to live by some of this stuff and you'll see a lot of barakah in your own relationships. First of all, understand that the, for the guys, the girl you like is somebody's sister, is somebody's daughter, is the respect and honor of somebody's family. So when you're staring at her like that, just think about somebody staring at your sister like that. Just remind yourself of that. It's a, you know, just remember this is somebody's honor we're talking about. It's okay for you to see a glance and say, oh, oh I want to marry her. That was great. But one glance is good enough for you and you take the dignified approach. Then the, the second thing, of course, first of all, don't be a perv and walk around like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't do that. You know, that's not the kind of Islamic spirit we're trying to revive here. <laughs> you know. So that, that's one. But two, if you do find somebody interesting, take a, take a, a respectful approach. Take a, you know, there are formal chaperoned matrimonial type sessions. That's fine, at least as a chaperone present there. And if that's not the case, the best approach, honest to God, the best approach is an indirect one. The best approach is through a friend, through somebody, you know a friend who has a sister who knows her, etc, etc. Try to be as indirect as possible. Because when you're direct, shaitan loves it. He just puts stuff in you and he puts stuff in her and the giggles start and the smiling and then the texting begins and then you're sharing, a, you know, then you're adding each other on Facebook and then you're calling each other late at night, then the Skype thing begins, then things get out of hand. Things take one step at a time and they just really get out of hand. Take as indirect an approach as possible. And you know, some people ask, well, how am I supposed to get to know the person? You can, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with getting to know the person, but get others involved. And so that's the other thing I want to attack today. It is, there is no harm in two families talking to each other. It is not too formal. Don't go crazy they're getting engaged. It's just two people trying to talk in a respectful way. Don't turn it into something it's not. So families, you say, I don't want to tell my family, it's not that serious yet. Actually, that's the problem. You should tell your family even when it's not serious. And your family shouldn't get all crazy. We can't approach them, they might take it too seriously. It's not serious, it's just two families talking. That's how communication is supposed to happen. If you're not involved in it, they're gonna do it on their own anyway. You can't stop it. A lecture will not stop it. It's already happening, it's been happening. And it didn't just start in 2013. It's been happening. It was, it's all around us. You don't think that stuff was happening when I was going to college in 1835? It was still happening. You know, these are realities. We have to deal with reality instead of cursing it and yelling at it. It's not going to change it. You know, we have to face it. So get your family involved. 
Don't let your get family get too worked up about it. it's too big of a deal. Don't let it become too big of a deal. It's okay to have a conversation with a family, with a you know, guy talking to a girl, with a chaperone, getting to know each other, trying to figure things out and things like that. And if it works out, it works out. If not, alhamdulillah, you move on. But you didn't get emotionally attached. You had some butterflies in your stomach, but they didn't turn into like entire pigeons in your stomach. Right? So you didn't go that crazy. You didn't get you didn't become emotionally invested. Here's the problem with becoming emotionally invested. When you become emotionally invested, you fall in love with a girl or with a guy or something, and you're like, I have to marry this person. You have, first of all, you have no guarantees it's gonna work out. And second of all, when you get that infatuated, you don't care what anybody else thinks. لَيْسَ فِي الْحُبِّ مَشُورًا Right? And when you go that crazy, then you don't wanna listen to anybody. And so you don't listen to your parents, you don't listen to her parents, you don't listen to your brother, your sister. Nobody's advice matters to you anymore. The, the speak, the, these parents try to bring you to a speaker. Sheikh talked to him, he wants to marry this girl. And the Sheikh's like, what am I gonna do? You know, don't marry her. Okay. Doesn't work. It's too late. And, when the, and it, if it doesn't work out, one of two things happens. If it does work out, you have scarred your family. Because you went to, on a war against your family to do it. And if it doesn't work out, you're scarred forever. And you will now not be able to have a healthy relationship again because in the back of your mind will be the other relationship. It's, it's an unhealthy way to go about things, you know? So don't do it. And if, you know, don't engage, don't invest yourself emotionally. Don't quote unquote fall in love like that. And if you think you just fell in love in this conference, walking down the hall, you saw a girl like, وَقَعْتُ فِي الْحُبْ that's not falling in love, that's just your hormones. Congratulations, you're a teenager. You know, that's not, that's not love. <laughs> you know? Anyhow, so for, for young people, you know, my, my serious advice is we have, to lo we have to become a little more serious. So there's two sides of it, right? the parent side and the youth side. For young people, my advice is get, become a little more strict. And for my pa the parents, my advice is become a little less strict. Like we've got an imbalanced situation here. We've got youth that have no guidelines and no restrictions. Nothing's wrong. Everything's permissible, like Assassin's Creed or something, right? It's like that. And on the other side, you've got parents that are way too strict and they're unrealistic in their strictness. And so we're, we're, we're choking our own community in this way, subhanAllah. This should not be happening. Now, those of you that are married, married people, show of hands. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Okay, good. Married people that are here, part of your job is to help young people get married, especially the younger couples here. Younger couples here, you both, you know, the, the men and the women in that couple, they have friends that aren't married that they've known for a while. And you need to be the, become matchmakers before they have to resort to anonymous websites, which the same guy is on every website. <laughs> He's got his profile on every single website. Everybody knows him, you know. It was one of my friends got married. He had his profile on like 30 Muslim matrimonial sites. And he asked me to speak at his wedding. And I was like, the internet will not be the same anymore. <laughs> the, the internet connection speeds just increased because so much load has been taken offline with all of these profiles. <laughs> you know, servers that were crashing for, for, for ages are now back up online now because, you know, congratulations, you're married. <laughs> And by, and I, you know, because I'm pretty cruel in my marriage talks. So I told him, by the way, every sister in the hall that's not married knows everything about you. Your height, where you worked, your favorite color. Because, yeah, they've been to those websites. So, <laughs> mashallah. So, you know, I'm not against the online thing. I'm, I'm really not. It's a reality. If you don't have any connections, what are you going to do? But be careful about it. Don't look for just a shallow, you know, criteria. Look for something more meaningful. You're looking for someone you're gonna live with the rest of your life. And for those of you younger girls that are being forced by their parents to marry some, their cousin from Bangladesh, those of you that are being forced to marry and they're being told you have to marry this person. Okay, what about this one? And we brought another one and we brought another one. And they just keep getting uglier for some reason. I don't know what it is, but they keep getting uglier and the pressure is mounting on you because you're reaching the cultural expiration date. Let me tell you something very strictly, very seriously. If you don't open your mouth, if you don't open your mouth and clearly say, this is not how I want to live. This is not gonna be the next 50 years of my life. This is not what I want to do. If you don't open your mouth and say, I shouldn't say anything, it's my parents won't understand. No, 
Families will not resolve issues until you openly talk. I'm not talking about yelling and screaming, but you have to be open and clear and let your parents know this is not how it's gonna go. It's not disrespectful. And parents, please listen to this. Please listen to this. Don't force your daughters into a marriage they're not happy with. Don't say on their behalf, no, 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 she's happy. We know, we know her. You don't know her. You don't know her. She's not happy. You're just saying that because I'm asking. No, she's okay. They don't, they don't know that they come crying to the imams, my, my father wants me to marry. I guess I should. Do you, have you seen the guy? No, but it's my parents. What can I do? In Islam, you have to obey your parents no matter what. Yes, in Islam, you have to obey your parents no matter what. But also in Islam, parents cannot be unjust. They don't have an open license to do whatever they want. They don't have that either. In Islam, parents and children are supposed to have a trusting relationship. You know? Don't hijack. You know, sometimes the only ayat our parents know is wabil walidayni ihsana. This is the only Quran. They don't even know the whole ayah. You know, just wabil walidayni ihsana. You know, you're like, ah, oh, got me again. <laughs> and they use that card. Look, our deen emphasizes the rights of parents more than any other religion known to man more than any other religion. But our religion also emphasizes fairness and mas'uliyah, the idea of responsibility. Like par parents do not get that many rights without having that many responsibilities. And you have responsibilities to your daughters and your sons. You really, really do. This, your homework assignment after this lecture, you know what it is? An open, honest, honest, brave conversation with your parents about when you think you should be married why you think you should be married, what kind of person you think you should marry, and parents don't flip out. Don't flip out. And young men, and this is my last piece, inshallah, I have a minute 20, I just wanna to talk to the young men, I talk to the girls a little bit. You know, get brave, don't be shy anymore, just be a little stronger. But for the young men, can you become men? For God's sake. Listen, 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 if you're like in your 20s, and every time you have a break, every time you have time off from school or a weekend off, you're spending it behind a screen with a PlayStation 3 or a 4 or an Xbox or whatever else, then you're not a man yet. Go, first of all, get a job even while you're in high school and college. I don't care, get a job, it'll turn you into a man. It'll make you ready for marriage. Just because you find girls pretty doesn't mean you're ready to get married. That doesn't mean that. You have to show some responsibility to be able to stand on your own two feet. And parents of teenage children, if you're not pushing your children to do work, you're like, Alhamdulillah, I can afford it. I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a business owner. I can afford it, my children don't have to work. Yes, they do because it's part of their education. I don't care if you're like changing tires at a car shop, you know, at a mechanic shop. I don't care if you're lawn mowing, but do work. It will give you respect for money. It gives you respect and responsibility. It prepares you for life. I made a case to my parents when I was 20 years old. I'm Pakistani, you know that's suicide, right? I made a case to my parents when I was 20 that I wanna get married. But you know what? I had been working 40 hours a week since I was 16 in New York City. I've never worked less than 40 hours a week. That was an easy week for me. And I've been going full time to college, you know, in high school. I, I actually took a longer time to graduate out of college because I had work. I never once took money from my parents for college tuition. I refused that. No way. If I can't afford it, I'm not going to college. I'll work on it myself. I worked in shoe stores. I worked in surgical places. I worked in like local Queens newspapers. I've done all kinds of crazy jobs. I even worked at a Desi grocery store. Ew. Oh my God. Blech. But I worked there for one day, but I did, and I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it. I worked, at a, I worked at a travel agency where my boss was a really mean Bangladeshi fellow. I love Bangladeshis, but he was really mean. He was really like, I used to call him the travel Nazi. He was really bad. And when I didn't make enough sales that day, he just yelled at me. So one day I just had it, I yelled back at him and I got fired, you know? And like 10 years later, I was giving khutbah in Long Island and he was in the first row. And I have a beard now, he didn't have a beard back then, and he recognized me too, he's like... <laughs> you know, and after the Jum'ah, everybody says, Assalamu Alaikum, Salaman, how are you? Make du'a for my children. He comes and he shakes my hand, he gives me a hug, he goes, you are still useless. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> right? I was like, I know, I know, I know. 
But you know why I'm telling you this? I'm telling you this because there's no shame in working. It's part of what makes you who you are. I got married at the age of 22, but I had, I can argue I had a right to. I was on my own for quite some time. I was taking care of my own responsibilities, you know? And if you're doing that, then don't expect the highest things. And my, my, my in-laws are crazy. They're just crazy. You know, I got married uh, six months after I got laid off. <laughs> I didn't have a job and I got married because they didn't, they didn't, I know, I know, I know. Okay, intaharwat. I didn't get married because I had the money. I, I got married because my, my in-laws felt that I was good for it. That was it. I could prove myself to them. That's all it was there. So look for that in a son. Look for that in the boys. May Allah Azza wa Jal turn our young men into real men that can carry uh, household responsibilities and really become good husbands to the sisters that are here that are looking to get married. May Allah Azza wa Jal find all of our young young singles. May Allah Azza wa Jal help find all help uh, all of them find the appropriate couple the appropriate spouse that will give them a happy married life. May Allah also help all of the divorced people here get remarried and get remarried quickly. Inshallah Taala. Allahu 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 Allah Allah